Even though Google Analytics cross-domain tracking should work almost out of the box, sometimes it just doesn't. In some cases, it might be caused by misconfiguration. In others, there might be some technical limitations. In this video, I will share the most common reasons why Google Analytics cross-domain tracking is not working and how to solve it. The first reason is that maybe you haven't configured domains in your Google Analytics 4 property, or maybe you have some typos there. If your user journey looks like this, where you have website A and website B, and then visitors can freely navigate between these two websites, then this is what you should do in your Google Analytics 4 property. Go to Google Analytics, then Admin, then Data Streams, select your website data stream, then click Configure Tag Settings, then configure your domains, and here you should include all domains that are part of the same user journey. So in my case, that would be website a.com and then website b.com, like this, and then click Save. Another popular mistake is having different measurement IDs on those different websites. If your user journey looks like this, where you have website A and website B, you need to make sure that they are both using the same measurement ID, which means that you are working with the same property and same data stream. If you're using two separate Google Tag Manager containers, one for website A, the other one for website B, then open both of those containers, then find the Google Tag, which is related to Google Analytics, and then make sure that the tag ID in this container and then in the container of website B is the same. And if you're using the same container on both websites and you have one Google tag for Google Analytics, then probably you're already doing this correctly. Another potential reason is that maybe you don't have Google Analytics tracking code on website B. It is installed on website A, but on website B, it's missing. You should check that by going to the website B and then opening developer tools. For example, in Chrome, you can click three dots right here, more tools, developer tools, then go to the network tab and start entering something related to Google Analytics. For example, if you enter analytics, which is part of the Google Analytics domain, then you can refresh the page. And if you see some request, it means that Google Analytics is installed. But if you don't see it, like I don't right here, then maybe Google Analytics is actually missing from the second website. But this is not necessary because maybe you're using server-side tagging where the request URLs might be modified. So in that case, you could try to enter collect. Maybe then you will see some request. Here I see some, but if I click it, it's not related to Google Analytics. It's related to Microsoft in my case. So this is not what I'm looking for. But even then it's possible that you actually have Google Analytics installed, but the request URL is modified in a way that there is no collect word there. So in that case, you will need to do a more thorough investigation on your own because different websites might have their setups done differently. So I cannot give you a universal explanation here. But if nobody in the company who's responsible for this website, nobody there knows anything about server-side tagging, then most likely the company is not using it and indeed you are missing the Google Analytics tracking code somewhere in the website. So to fix that, you or your developer will need to add Google Analytics and I mean analytics code with the same measurement ID to the second website as well. Then one more thing that you should check is Google Analytics cookies. If the visitor goes from website A to website B, Google Analytics cookies related to that property must be the same. For example, here I have one website, this is another website, even though it's subdomain, but the same principle applies to cross-domain tracking. So what you should do is to check the cookies by going to the first website, then I click three dots, more tools, developer tools, then I go to application, expand cookies, select my domain, and then enter underscore GA. And here I look at the cookie values. The last four digits are 7277. Now I will go to the website B, also open developer tools, go to cookies, then enter underscore GA. And here I see that the cookie values are the same. So if they are the same, this is correct. But if they are different, especially the underscore GA cookie, then something is wrong. Maybe there is some code on a website B that overwrites the cookie. Maybe something is done in Google Tag Manager, and I mean Google Tag. Maybe something is modified with parameters such as cookie prefix or cookie domain or especially client ID. These parameters are advanced, and if you're not sure how they work, this might cause problems with your cross-domain tracking. There are many places where things could have gone wrong, 
but many of them are edge cases, so I just cannot cover them in this video. But you will need to investigate and try to find out why your cookies do not match between two domains. The next potential reason is redirects. In a nutshell, Google Analytics cross-domain tracking works like this. I have website A, and this is a demo page. On this page, I have a link that will redirect me to website B. If I've configured the domains in Google Analytics 4 property, then Google Analytics will start decorating links going from website A to website B. So now if I do the right click on website A, I see that this URL contains a particular parameter which is necessary for cross-domain tracking to work. And what's important is that when I click this link and I go to that second website, the parameter must still be present in the page address. Otherwise, cross-domain tracking will not work. So let's see what happens. I will click this link. I was redirected to the next page, but as you can see, the URL parameter is no longer here. In fact, I can even check this more thoroughly. There is a Chrome extension called Redirect Path. I will post a link to it below the video. And if I click that extension here, I will see that there was a redirect. Initially, I was trying to go to this URL and here we see that cross-domain parameter but then a redirect happened and that new URL no longer has the parameter. So it means that cross-domain tracking will not work properly. The only way to solve it in this case would be to cooperate with website developers and ask them not to remove URL parameters if there is a redirect happening somewhere. If you see a word JavaScript mentioned somewhere, it means that the redirect is happening directly in JavaScript code but in this case, I don't see it, which means that this is happening somewhere on the back end or on the server level. Then the next possible reason is iframes, and they can be a real pain in the ass. In a nutshell, it works like this. You have a website A, and on that website, you have installed Google Analytics, and then also on that website, you have embedded website B with an iframe. And inside that iframe, you also want to have Google Analytics. So if you ask me, this is a direct path to nightmares and inaccurate tracking. A much better option would be to remove Google Analytics from the iframe and instead try to send just regular events, let's say data layer events from iframe to the parent page. This is a quite extensive topic, so it goes out of scope of this video. But if you want to learn more about how to set this up, then I explain it in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tech Manager course. But the general idea would look like this. This is a parent page. I mean, all that white background is the parent page. Then here inside the iframe, I have a website B. And instead of adding Google Analytics tracking code inside the iframe, it would be better to have Google Analytics on the parent page. And then by using certain JavaScript APIs, you would be sending just some interactions from website B, I mean, from the iframe to the parent page. And then your tracking code, which is Google Analytics, would be firing only on the parent page. It would be sending data related both to the parent page and the iframe. But in that case, you would not have any issues with cookies. Because normally right now, when you have a parent page and then the iframe, cookies cannot be shared between them because here I am dealing with completely two separate domains. Then another thing that I thought is worth mentioning is that maybe on the website B, you have a thing called content security policy. And maybe that policy is blocking Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4 on website B. Of course, in this case, then Google Analytics will not work on website B at all, but that also means that cross-domain tracking will not function as well. So in a nutshell, content security policy is a tool that website developers use who want to control what kind of scripts are loaded on a page. So what you could do here is that you can go on website B, open the developer tools in your browser, and then go to the console tab and look something, some errors mentioning content security policy. And if that error contains something like googletagmanager.com or googleanalytics.com or something similar, then it means that content security policy is causing problems and does not allow Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager work properly. In that case, you will need to cooperate with developers and ask them to include additional rules in the content security policy. I'll post a link to the documentation related to this topic below the video. Then the next thing is consent. There are many ways where things can go wrong, but I just want to mention some of the situations. So if your scenario looks like this, where you have website A, then the visitor goes to website B, and on website A, the visitor gives consent because the pop-up appears, 
but maybe your consent management platform does not support multiple domains. Therefore, on website B, the pop-up appears again. And if then the visitor denies, it means that cross-domain tracking will not work. That visitor will be tracked on website A, but will not be tracked on website B. Unless, of course, maybe you're using advanced consent mode or maybe you're using something else. But like in normal situations, most compliant situations where there is no tracking, if consent is not given, then obviously your cross-domain tracking will not work. So one way to mitigate that maybe would be to investigate if your consent management platform supports multiple domains so that the consent state would be shared across different websites. Or maybe another scenario could be that you have cookie consent pop up here, it is implemented properly, the visitor gives consent, but here you don't have that pop up. And since consent cookies are not shared, your tracking codes here don't know whether consent was given. So by default, they think that the consent was denied. This means that again, your tracking codes here will not be fired and Google Analytics cross domain tracking will not work. So this is something for you to investigate as well. Try to give consent on one website, then see if consent data is available on website B. If not, then check if the cookie consent pop-up appears on website B and check what happens if consent is given there. Then another situation which is quite rare, but it's still worth checking, and that is related to the accept incoming parameter. Here I am on a website B, and let's say that cross-domain tracking for some reason is not working in this situation. So what I could do is that I can do the right click on a page, then view page source, and then I should be looking for the G tag, because let's say that in this particular project, Google Tag Manager is not used. Google Analytics is installed directly with the gtag.js code. And here, if you see a command that looks like this, where there is a linker, accept incoming, false, this means that Google Analytics tracking code loaded on this page will not try to look for the cross domain tracking parameter in the URL. I mean, the one that started with underscore GL and then, you know, something, something, something. So even if the URL is decorated with the cross domain parameter, but the linker is set to false, I mean, the accept incoming parameter, then this should be removed or at least it should be changed to true. Google also has a documentation about measuring activity across multiple domains and the parameters such as accept incoming, they are mentioned right here. Now you might have noticed that there is a decorate forms parameter, but there are some nuances. Even though there is that parameter, practically, Google Analytics cross domain tracking does not support forms. So if I submit a form on website A, and then I'm redirected to the website B, cross domain tracking will not be activated and the URL will not be decorated. And right now there is no easy ready-made Google supported solution for that. In their documentation, Google mentions the manual setup, but basically what it means is that on website A, your developers should try to fetch the client ID, session ID, and then maybe let's say add it to the URL, which redirects to the website B. And then on the website B, your developers should try to fetch that information and set it when the Google tag is loaded. I have some additional details in my blog post, so I will post a link to it below the video as well. And the same thing applies to buttons. For example, here, let's imagine that this button, after I click it, it will redirect me to another website with another domain and I have configured cross-domain tracking. Now, if I do the right click, inspect, what you will see here is that this element in HTML is a button and cross-domain tracking of Google Analytics does not decorate buttons. It decorates only links. For example, here on the demo page, I will do the right click, inspect, and this is a link. The HTML tag is A, which means anchor, also known as the link. So since I have this element and it has an href parameter, this element will be decorated by Google Analytics because it knows that this is a link that will redirect me to another website. But in this case, it's a button that is using the button HTML tag and it will not be decorated. But maybe on your website, some buttons are links. Maybe they are just designed to look like buttons, but if you do the right click and inspect, maybe you will see that they are links. So the idea of working with buttons is the same as with forms, where you will have to implement the manual setup, which is kind of a shame because I would like to have some ready-made solution created by Google. 
Yes, there might be some non-official solutions created by the community, but when it comes to situations like this one, I would definitely prefer having some official solution. Hopefully, this video helped you fix cross-domain tracking issues. If not, then take a look below the video. I have added additional resources there. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tech Manager or Google Analytics 4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.